Hey, how we doing, Vine Church? So glad to be with you again, excited. Man, we are just working our way through the Sermon on the Mount. And listen, uh, tonight we have such an incredible experience um, right here in the Sermon on the Mount. And, and some of you are just going to feel like, man, I've never had to deal with this. I've never had any trouble with this. And, and so I would just ask you that even if this isn't something that you um, have a problem with or have ever had a problem with, um, just to hear me out and let's hear what Jesus has to say about this. Um, we're just going to dive in uh, to the topic of worry and anxiety. <laughs> and so I say that kidding because I don't think there's a person out there who, who doesn't deal with this, if not on a daily basis, at least on a weekly basis. And, and we all deal with worry and anxiety. And so I'm so excited and so blessed just to get to stand before you and, and tell you what Jesus has to say about this. And, and listen, I know there are all kind of depths um, and, and different things that contribute to these things. And, and so I just want to hear from what um, it, it is in our scriptures and, and what Jesus has to say just about doubt and worry. And so uh, I want to say this before we get into it. I understand there is also um, just some medical aspects to just clinical depression, clinical anxiety. And, and in no way um, do I want you to hear me say that, that those things aren't real and those things aren't gripping. Man, I just I see it all over our society that, that those things can take a hold of people. But I want to talk about the things that we can control, the added worry, the added anxiety, the things that we allow to build that are built out of not having a faithful relationship with Jesus. And so, listen, this is what I want to tell you. As you face worry and anxiety, there's an answer for those things. The things that we can put off to the side. The answer is, I hope you said Jesus right there. And, and so tonight as we get into this, listen, there's going to be one overarching thing. It's been all the way through the Sermon on the Mount. It's all the way through the Scriptures. And the answer in that topic is Jesus. And so let's get into it, Matthew chapter 6. Let me pray for us to get us started. Dear Jesus, just thank you um, for how good you are to us, God. Thank you for how you love us. God, I just pray that you would speak loudly and clearly through your word, God. You would have your people understand what you have to say about our worries, about our doubt. God, I want your people to hear how you love them. And God, how you don't want them to live in that spirit of fear. God, to live in that spirit of peace, knowing that we are in a relationship with the Almighty God. And so, God, I would just ask for you to do what only you can do and just speak through the power of the Holy Spirit. Speak through the video. Speak into the homes that people are gathered in right now, God. I pray that your spirit would be there with them. God, I pray that you would just... Um, let your presence be known. God, I pray that you would block out all the distractions of the enemy. God, I pray that we would fight the enemy. God, not, not just um, be okay with staying put, but God, we would take the war to our enemies in your name. And so God, I ask all these things in Jesus' beautiful name. Amen. So Matthew chapter 6. Listen, I, I'm so glad... Um, that I can't stare at anybody uh, or people specifically as um, through the camera as we get into this topic. And, and listen, this will be one of the weeks where you say, man, he was just really preaching at me. And, and listen, I promise you, I'm not. I'm preaching to us as a whole. And, and so I'll stand before you and say, um, as your pastor... That, that I will deal with worry and anxiety 
as well. And, and so the point of tonight is not to beat you up if you worry or have anxiety, but I want to help you. I want you to hear what Jesus has to say. I want to help you through some of these things. And so Matthew chapter 6, starting in verse 25. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? And so as Jesus begins, listen, oftentimes I think we pick up this part of Scripture and we don't pay attention to, to it in its whole context as is with a lot of Scriptures. And so we go straight to the do not be anxious part. But listen, that little word that starts us off in the therefore is so important. Because what has Jesus been teaching us all throughout the Sermon on the Mount and specifically as we got into chapter 6? Let, let me just back up and remind you. He says, beware of practicing your righteousness in front of people. Be careful how you pray. Be careful how you fast. And he would give us the Lord's Prayer. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us our daily bread. We go on to say, as we talked about last week, do not lay up your treasures on earth. Because they can be destroyed. They can be done away with. And so, as we get to this portion of of Jesus' sermon, he, he backs up and says, therefore. So what he's saying is, because of all these things, therefore, let me tell you this. And so I, I just I, I want to lay this right before you as we get started right out of the gate. That if your eye is still attracted to the things of this world, I cannot help you with the anxiety that Jesus is talking about here. I cannot help you with the worry. If you're still enamored by things that can be destroyed, then I cannot help you with the anxiety and the worry that you're feeling. You say, why? Because Jesus has built up to this point. That's why He says, therefore, do not worry about these things. He said, don't, Set your eyes on the things of this world, on the treasures of this world, because they can all be destroyed or taken from you. And if I can get you to see anything, it's that you cannot worry and have stress over the things that are just transient. And even if they're not taken from you now, they will one day be destroyed or taken from you. And man, if you put your energy into those things, that, that are just here today and gone tomorrow, I cannot help you with your anxiety. If you're not willing to pray, God, give me my daily bread because I understand that everything that I have comes from you and it's a good blessing from you. But I need you daily. If we can't get to that point, we can't begin to chip away at our worries and our anxiety. But here's the encouraging part. It, it, it's just the opposite. That if I can get to the place of God, give me my daily bread. I need you every day. Everything that I have, all that I am, it, it totally exists because of you. Because you are my daily bread. Because you've given me everything that I need. Then we can begin to chip away at anxiety. Our mind is thinking in the right direction. Our eyes are beginning to be set on what we need them to be set on. But for many of us, the problem just still lies is that we're fixed on the things of this world. We're fixed on... on listen, I'll just be real honest. Look, what does Jesus have to say? What you will eat or what you will drink. Is it wrong to be excited about good food or good drink? Absolutely not. Man, one of the things I get excited about is just watching all these different foods being made and how people make them. Now listen, I don't have a very big palate, so I don't like 
a lot of these things. But man, I get excited about food too. But what Jesus is saying is listen, don't worry about what you're going to eat or what you're going to drink because the body is more than just food. There's so much more to it. Don't worry about the things that come and go. Listen, it may seem like such a small thing, but to a group of people who had to really plan on their meals and how they were going to eat and prepare, then this wasn't a small thing. And even to them, he says, do not worry about what you're going to eat. You see how the two go hand in hand? God, give me today my daily bread. So now he can say, therefore, do not worry about what you're going to eat. I'm going to provide. But if our eyes cannot leave the things of this world that, that he says will be burned up or destroyed or moss can eat, then man, we can't begin to attack the worry. And what's underneath all that worry and, and stress is just a need to control those material things. Why do we feel the need to control those material things or those relationships? Why do we feel that? What's underneath that? Because if we'll be honest, that's where our treasure is. We're not truly treasuring the Almighty. We're not truly treasuring Jesus Christ. Because if I was truly treasuring the Creator, the Good Father that I say I serve, Man, I wouldn't worry about any of these things that are so materialistic because I know He's the giver of all those things. And when one of those things passes away, He's going to give me something even better for that. And so, what, what I'm getting at is underneath our anxiety and worry about these things. Man, it just reveals... And he's going to say later on, and we'll, we'll get to it in just a minute, that man, maybe there's just a lack of faith in who I really am. And that lack of faith leads to you not treasuring the things that should be treasured in your life. But rather, you're just okay with a crummy imitation. You know, material things, they just make crappy God. I mean, you go after them and, and you spend all this time trying to get these things and, and hoping that they'll satisfy. And man, we worry and we have stress over what? the number one cause of divorce in the world, in and outside of the church, is what? You should have said it. Money. Number one. Has been, probably always will be. And you say, well, I'm not really chasing money. I just I want to have enough to be okay. But how many times have you worried and stressed about money? And man, it comes and goes. For those of you that are hardworking, it comes and goes every week. It comes in through your check and goes right back out of your wallet. Some of you faster, a lot faster than it should. And man, we get stuff with that money, and, and there's all this worry and these things when they're our treasure see they're tied together because we worry about the money that we don't have and we get money and once we get the money we spend it on the things that we think are going to make us happy and then we worry because we spent the money on the things we thought we were going to be happy with that didn't really make us happy you see the vicious cycle and so this is why jesus builds the way he does it is do not lay up for yourself treasures here on earth because that can all be destroyed and there'll never be enough for you. There'll never be enough. And then you'll go back to worry and anxiety and not relying on me. Why are you going to worry about what's going to happen? Man, I brought you to this place. I'm a good father. And see, some of the very things that we spend the most time praying about, if we can be honest, Man, they are so worldly and materialistic. Man, they're just 
They're, they shouldn't even be on our radar, but we've spent so much anxiety and worry over these things that we even take them into our prayer closet with us. And how disrespectful is that to the very one that should be your treasure? Maybe it's that relationship that you've just been praying forever for. And listen, I know this is a real thing, young people. I know it's a real desire and it's a God-given desire to want to have that someone. But man, you can put that in a place where it does not belong. Where it's your treasure. It's too much of your treasure. And you have all this worry and anxiety about how am I going to find the one and how am I going to get with this person? How is it going to be when I do get to this person? How am I going to hold it all together? Instead of just relying on Jesus and understand that all good gifts come from Him like the book of James tells us. We build up all this worry and anxiety about that. Man, i got to find the right career. i got to find the right job. i got to worry about how I'm going to pay the bills. Now listen, what I'm not doing is excusing laziness. So some of y'all don't go quit your job tomorrow and say, I don't have to worry about nothing. It's all just going to flow in. That's not what I'm saying. As a matter of fact, he's going to address that in just a second. But what I am saying is we add in this worry and anxiety and we put it on ourselves because the things that we're worrying and stressing out about are all in his hands, number one. And number two, most of the things that we're the most stressed out and worried about aren't things that we should be treasuring that much anyways. Remember what he said, where your heart is, there also is your treasure. And so the things that grip your um, heart, the things that you're most prone to worry and stress about, man, that just reveals kind of where your treasure's set on. And I don't know about you, but if you're an almighty God, the creator of the world, you don't really have to stress out about Him. He's got it. He's done it. He will do it. And so if He's my true treasure, then this is how worry and anxiety can begin to fall off of me because the thing that I'm seeking the most should not cause worry and stress in me because He has it all and He holds all the answers. And by the way, He's called me into life with Him. He's called me into a, a life with Him of communion with Him and the Father and the Holy Spirit. And in that brings peace that I am a child of the King. And so I want us to remember this. Matthew has just been presenting us that Jesus has been king just from chapter 1. I want you to understand that kings, and He is our King, make no mistake about that, King Jesus, kings do not rule in the manner in which Jesus is teaching. This is exclusive only to Him. Kings rule in a way to where your your loyalty lies with them through fear, worry, and anxiety of how they'll react or how they'll treat you. But King Jesus does not work in that mode. King Jesus is so above all of those things. He wants His people of His kingdom to not have worry. To not have anxiety but to treasure Him and love Him and know that He has it all taken care of. All taken care of. And so He goes on to say this, Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather in the barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you being anxious can add a single hour to a span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Listen, he uses the birds uh, as this picture to paint for us. And, and I don't know when the last time you saw a starving bird was, but I'd be willing to bet it's not very often. The birds get fed, and yet they don't have barns to store things in. They don't have bank accounts. 
but yet they're busy about the things they need to be busy about. And God provides for them. This is why I say I'm not giving you a right to be lazy and just say God's going to take care of everything. No, you go out and you work and you do the things you need to do, but you rely on Him. And you understand that your very job, your very business, your very career is a good gift from Him and He provided you with those things so that you would not worry and stress, but just rely and know that He gave you that to take care of you. He said the birds don't have all these things, yet they're fed. And I love what he says right after that. Are you not of more value than they are? Listen, nobody gets upset when when you hit a bird or when a bird dies. Nobody's throwing funerals for birds. Jesus said, if my father provides for these meaningless birds. If He'll provide even for the birds, do you not think as a child of the King, He is going to provide for you? If He'll take care of these birds, how much more will your Father take care of you? And then He says this, in which of you by being anxious can add a single hour to his span of life. I love the old saying that says worry is like a rocking chair. It helps pass the time, but you don't get anywhere doing it. And listen, we worry and we get all anxiety ridden and we plan. And most of the time when we get to the point of the thing that we were worrying the most about, it's not even like we thought it was going to be. Worrying doesn't do anything. Planning does something. Trusting, following a path does something. Worry does nothing but waste time. Worry does nothing good for us. He said, and which one of you, by being anxious or by worrying, can even add a single hour to your lifespan? No matter how much you stress out, about the end of your life, no matter how much you stress out about whatever it is that you're stressing out about, it stress does not fix the problem. It never has. You can't even add an hour to your life. And God said, but yet I created you from the dust of the ground. I breathe life into you. I hung the moon and the stars by my mere words. You can't even add an hour of life. Why are you anxious about it? The one who created it all, the one who gave life, also upholds and sustains life. Why are you worried about it? I'm going to give you your daily bread. You're one of mine. I'll take care of you. And too many times, I just believe that we forget that. We forget as children of the King, will there be suffering and hardship in this life? Absolutely. And listen, I'm speaking to myself as much as anybody else. But at the end of the day, if Jesus Christ came and went to the cross and rose again for the forgiveness of my sin, if I trust Him with my eternity, why do I not trust Him with my Monday? God, I I trust You to save my soul and forgive me of the most heinous things that have ever been thought or done. But God, I don't trust You with my money. God, I trust You to forgive the bitterness and hatred in my heart. But I do not trust You in my relationship dreams. God, I trust You with thousands upon thousands of years of eternity. But I do not trust You with the situation that I'm facing tomorrow morning when I go into work. Listen, when we put it in that context, you say, well, that that's a bit much. No, that's how we work and that's how we think and that's what we're saying to God. 
that would trust you with something that I couldn't do on my own and providing eternal life and the forgiveness of sin, but I will not trust you with my everyday activities. Just because you don't understand how He's going to work them out does not mean He will not work them out. Matter of fact, if you could understand how God was going to do everything and the exact plan, then He wouldn't be a God worth following. Because if your brain was as big as His brain, then it'd be a problem. If you knew what He knew, then you would be God and He wouldn't. And you and me both know that you don't make a very good God because you've tried it. You've tried being God of your life. He says, how can you even add a single hour to your life? It definitely wouldn't come through worry and stressing about it. Matter of fact, we know the physical implications of worry and stress. They do quite the opposite. And he goes on to give us this picture. And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. Neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown in the oven, will he not much more clothe you? O oh, you of little faith. Because he said he didn't just throw all the grass out there but the lilies in the field, consider how beautiful they are. Solomon and everything that he had and all the gold and all the precious stones and all the silver didn't even hold a candle to the natural beauty of these lilies. Doesn't even hold a candle to it. And God did that. For the very grass that people would walk on, He made it beautiful. They're clothed. And if he would do that for grass, what do you think he would do for one of his children? And so underneath our worry and anxiety, listen, here's what's at play. Hear me. Oh, you of little faith. Oh, you of little faith. What's really underneath everything is we begin to question and doubt, is he God? Because if I really believe that He's God and He called me into communion with Him and He called me into life with Him, then what happens on my Mondays and my Tuesdays are, are just very, very minute in comparison to an all-powerful God. But what happens is my faith begins to dwindle a little bit. My belief in who He really is begins to dwindle. And listen, here's my fear. Here's what the problem with that is. I'm not telling you, and I'm not calling you out and saying if you have worry that you're faithless. But what I am telling you is what it can lead to real fast. It's just a doubt and a questioning against the very nature of God. You're doubting His very nature. And He says, listen, e even creation spouts that I will take care of it. But you don't think so. And, and thinking that He won't provide for His children, He won't take care of the situation that's happening in your life. It's saying I'm questioning the very nature of who God is. I'm not sure he is a good father. I'm not sure that he knows the plans that he has for me. Plans to prosper me. I'm not sure any of that's true. So I'm going to worry about this. I'm going to worry about that. And in his love, he just continues to deal with us. And what Jesus is saying is he wants to move us out of this spirit of worry and anxiety and, and us give our total dependence to Him. You know why He's telling us to do that? Because man, He makes way better decisions for your life than you do. An all-knowing God, an all-powerful God, 
makes way better decisions for you than you ever will. Thank you, Jesus. I don't care how old you are watching right now. You've already made some decisions you regret and you may carry that with you for a lifetime, but I pray that you don't. But God's never made a mistake. Ever. And He said, I don't want you to worry and I don't want you to stress. I want you to just give it to me. Let me take care of it. I knew what was coming all along. I had your days numbered. I knew what was going to happen. Just give it to me. Let me handle it. Let me take care of it. And you say, I do. Anytime something big happens in my life, Pastor, man, I just give it to God. I'm not just talking about the big stuff. I'm talking about everyday life. Give us our daily bread. I'm talking about every day turning that over and walking in the power and the confidence that you are a child of the King. Not because you have power or confidence, but because you're a child of the one who holds all power. Because you're His. One of the biggest attacks of the enemy is fear and worry and stress because it just paralyzes you. Take it from me, I understand it. I know this all too well. If worry did anything good for us, it would not be a plot of the enemy to give us worry. The enemy cares nothing about arming you. Matter of fact, he does not want to arm you. He wants to disarm you and destroy you. But he uses worry and anxiety to paralyze you. See, he doesn't have to get you to be an atheist to get you to be ineffective. All he has to do is bring you to a place of doubt, of little faith, of worry and anxiety, and he holds you exactly where you are because you're paralyzed. And Jesus would even say, oh, it's little faith. He would go on to say, Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things. And your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. Listen, he he says, this is what the Gentiles do. They seek after clothing and food, money. And, And listen, Again, none of these are bad things. But our culture has built a life out of these things. Eat at the finest places. Have the best meals. Drink of the finest of things. Clothe yourself in the finest of things. Drive the best of the best. And and they create worry and anxiety in us whether by we get them and we worry about how we're going to take care of them or pay for them. Or we stress out about because we don't have them and -and so-and-so does have them. See, it's, it's a vicious cycle. If we finally get the thing that we've been worrying and stressing out about getting, I'll just use a car for an example. We get that car that we've always wanted and we stressed out about how we were going to get the money to get that car. And we finally get that car. And man, it's great. And then we realize we got to drive that car to Walmart. And now I gotta park that car. And I don't really want to park the car because I wanted this car for so long that what if something happens to the car after I park the car? And I, I say it as a joke, and we're laughing, but you see the cycle of worry and anxiety. How stuff won't ever break that cycle. And I see people do it all the time. People say. Oh, if I could get to just this level of income, it would lower my stress level. I'd be comfortable. No, it wouldn't. Because you just add more bills. Man, if I could just have this vehicle and not have to worry about this old vehicle, man, it would just lower my stress levels. No, it wouldn't. Because then you're worried about how to maintain and keep up with that vehicle. Man, if I could just 
have a partner, if I could just have that person in my life to share life with, man, my stress levels would come down. No, it wouldn't. Now it's double because you have two of you thinking the same way. When you make these things your God, when you, when you make them your treasure, you put your heart into it, and where your heart is, that's what your treasure is. When you put those things into the place of your treasure, then it creates worry and anxiety. Why? Because those things were never meant to be big enough to lift the anxiety and worry off of you. There was only one person, and is one person, that was ever made to do that, and his name is Jesus. I love that he says, for your father knows that you need him. Do we think down here that God's just turned a blind eye and he don't know the bill that we have coming up? He, he doesn't know what we're stressed and worried about. He didn't know the things that are upcoming in our life. You think somehow you're the one that slipped through the crack and God didn't see it coming? You think all the way back as Ephesians tells us, before the foundations of the world began and He chose us out. You think you're the one that slipped through? He didn't see this day coming? That as He went to the cross to pay for sin, that He didn't see this hardship you had coming? That when He makes promises to give you peace, that He's working all things together you think this day is the day that slipped through? That he must have not seen this one? No, he saw them all. He saw them all. Your father knows what you need. Turn over with me to Romans. Or sorry, Second Corinthians. Same author, different book. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. If you know me for any amount of time, you know I love this chapter. Paul's going to call us jars of clay. So we have this treasure. Holy Spirit, Jesus living with the inside of us. And we're just merely jars of clay. There's nothing. But we have the Spirit of Christ in us. And then he would go on to say this in verse 16. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light and momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. And as we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. Paul's saying even in affliction, even in suffering, don't let it cause stress and worry and a dip in your faith. Why? Because even those things produce an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. That the things you're worried and stressed out about, even good things, look, we can act like we're being responsible, but we're really just unrighteous worry over these things. Things that God had already promised He'd take care of, we're worrying about. Parents, I'm talking to you for a second. You got some unnecessary worry for your children. And it stems from a lack of faith that the very God that provided you with life and gave you those kids are their father too. Husband, wives, you got some unwarranted stress and anxiety for your partner. That the very one that gave you that person is not taking care of them as his own too. Business owners, employees, you have some you have some unneeded stress in, in your world too. The very one that 
provided you with the ability to have that business is the one that will see it through to the end. Employee, the, the very God that gave you and put you in the place that he wanted you to minister in while making a living, yeah, he's got it taken care of. And all these things are, are just, Paul says, preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. But as we look to the things that are unseen, because the things that we can touch and feel and taste and smell and put on our bodies, man, those things are transient. They'll be gone. Here today, gone tomorrow. But the unseen kingdom of God will reign forever. You know, back in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus says, do not be anxious. What shall we eat or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? And as we get ready to bring this to a close, listen, I just want to challenge you. we got a couple more verses. It brings up food and drink and clothing. And I just want to be real with you. And we worry what people are going to think of us so much. How am I going to provide for myself? You're not. You never have. Everything that you have has been a gift either from the Father to the children of the kingdom or by God's common grace either way. Whether you're saved or unsaved, everything that you have in your life comes from God. Either the common grace benefit because he just allows us to enjoy the good things that he's put in this world, whether we're saved or not. Or if you're a child of the king, every aspect of your life has been given to you from your good and right heavenly father. Man, we worry. What am I to eat? What am I to drink? What am I to wear? I mean, that last one just, it just paints a picture for me of where we're at as a culture. Man, clothing is so important to us because of how people will see or perceive us. Man, we want that approving look. Somebody looks and like, oh man, I like that outfit. Man, we want that. So again, what is it that you treasure you want the approval of God or you want the approval of man? So many of these things that we're after, that we're stressing out about and we're worrying about, man, it's all because we want the approval of people. We want the approval of man. We want those glances. We want those applause. We want to be accepted. Now listen to how Jesus finishes off this portion. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Listen, here's the answer. Here's the answer. You want to devote your attention to something? You devote it to the kingdom. You want to devote your responsibility to something? You devote it to the kingdom and to seeking the righteousness of God because that's the promise that will be fulfilled. When you seek these things, you will get them. Therefore, you will not be anxious or worrisome because the very things you are seeking will be provided to you from your heavenly Father. But they're kingdom things. The righteousness of God. The work in the kingdom. The benefit of being in the kingdom. He says if you'll seek first the kingdom and the righteousness, all these things will be added to you. Therefore, you don't have to stress or worry. 
You really want to be done with unnecessary worry and stress? Seek first kingdom things. And listen, I'm not even talking on this big macro spiritual level. We'll bring it down just, just on a very practical level for a second. If you're busy about the work of the kingdom, you don't really have time to stress out about what you're wearing or what you're driving. You're busy about the work of the kingdom. Man, you're focused on those that have nothing rather than trying to keep up with those who have everything. See how it begins just on a very practical way to do away with worry and anxiety about what we got or what we don't got? Man, you begin to work with the homeless. I mean, it doesn't matter if you have a 4,000 square foot house. You're just grateful and blessed that you have a house. You begin to work with the sick and pray over the sick and lay hands on the sick and terminally ill. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't stress you out that you don't feel great today. You wake up and say, God, thank you that I got breath in my body and I can get up and go to work. As you begin to seek the kingdom and be busy about the work of the kingdom, it creates worship in your heart. Not because, not because of the steps that we're taking, but because of the transition that begins to happen in your heart. Because you begin to not lay up your treasure here on earth, but because you're devoting your time to kingdom things, they become your treasure. And Jesus becomes your ultimate treasure. And when Jesus becomes your ultimate treasure, you don't have a lot of capacity left in your heart to worry and be anxiety ridden about the little things that happen today because you're looking to eternity with your treasure. I mean, that's my prayer for us. My prayer for us. Listen, I know. I, I understand. We're never going to be a worry-free people. I'm not asking you to be, and God knows you can't be. But then He wants to take that stuff from you. Just pile it on Him. Cast all your cares upon Him because He cares for you. Pile it on the, one, on the very one who can hold all those things. He goes on to say this, Therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own troubles. I love that this part ended like this because just a little bit earlier, Jesus has said, just by worrying, can you add a, even a single hour to your life? And he comes back and he says, don't be anxious about tomorrow. You're living in today. Don't be anxious about 24 hours from now. You can't even add an hour to your life. Why are you worried about 24 hours from now? You worry about today. You take today and be thankful for today. You be grateful for today. You count your blessings today. Don't even look to tomorrow. And I cannot tell you, I cannot tell you how many situations that I've been called into, I've been asked to pray out, pray over, or, or just this seems so bleak and seems so grim. And in 24 hours or less, in so many cases, that problem's not even a problem anymore. And we get so focused this little bit of time that we have here in these few minutes and these few hours. And God's looking at the whole picture. You don't need to stress. I've looked at the whole picture from beginning to end. I know all of it. Man, we get so wrapped up because we're not seeking the kingdom and the things that are unseen. But rather, we're chasing things that are seen in the worldly kingdom. No wonder you're stressed out. The very thing that you're putting all your trust and all your dreams in 
are just transient. They can be taken away. The stock market can fall. The economy crash. Jobs can be cut, laid off. I've seen businesses devastated. Relationships broken. All those things that are here on earth can be gone in less than 24 hours. But the work of the kingdom will be eternal. The relationship with the king will be eternal. That's why he says I can move you into peace. But you got you get you got to get your eyes right. You got to get your eyes fixed on what they need to be fixed on. Man, if you're laying up for yourself treasures here on earth, your life's just going to be marked by anxiety and worry. Because man, those things were never meant to be a fulfillment to you. I am. And I'm calling you in to life. And so as we get ready to pray, listen. I just ask you to be real honest. I'm, I'm going to ask you to just go ahead and bow your head. Let's pray together. I'm just I'm going to be real honest with you. We all have worries and anxieties in different ways and different shapes. But it's been on my heart for some time now, and I mention it quite regularly, that I believe anxiety and depression has, cre- has just creeped in and just begin to cripple the followers of Jesus. And I do not believe that is a work of his hand, but a work of the enemy. And I know to some level, some of us will deal with it all the time. And to some level, some are a little bit deeper. But there's people to talk to. There's medication to take. I mean, I'm just talking about the majority of our anxiety and our worries can just be done away with with a refocus and on what is truly to be treasured. I'll be real honest with you. Some of you this very week have spent more time thinking about what you're going to wear or trying on clothes that you're going to wear to this or that event or this or that thing than you've spent with the very God and Creator. And you wonder why you have worry and anxiety. Some of you have literally spent more time thinking about the restaurant that you want to go eat at or this big dinner that you want to prepare, then you have thinking about Jesus Christ. Some of you have spent more time thinking about your financial situation, whether it be what you don't have or what you're you're working towards having. Then you have about the life that you've been called into with Jesus. This is why you got worry and anxiety in you. Because these aren't things that he's providing for you, but rather these are things that you're chasing after that you don't need in the first place. I want to help you with those things. I want to help you with those things. And so I'm going to pray for us. And I'm going to just pray. In the name of Jesus, powerfully against the spirit of depression and anxiety that would come to cripple all of us. And I'd ask you just to be real honest in your time of prayer and just confess these things before an all knowing God. And I would just ask Him to reveal those specific things in your heart and begin to release those things. And I know it won't be easy, and I know it won't be all in one day. It's going to be a process. For some of you, it's going to be months, and for some of you, it's going to be years of letting go. But I want us to be a people that can say, yes, today, God, give me your daily bread. I need it. I need you every day. Every single day. So let's pray. Dear Jesus, I would just ask, God, first, before I ask, I would confess. I would confess our worry and our anxiety, God. 
that is not of you. God, I confess that just the blasphemous act of putting materialistic things in your place, God. Putting another person in your place. God, where we would hold and esteem them as God's. God, I confess that for us. God, I'm sorry. Where we have been a people of little faith. That our faith has just waned from understanding who you are in your very nature. So God, I pray that you would just do work in our hearts. God, not to beat us up, but God, to help us. That our treasure wouldn't be on things that can be stolen or taken away or thrown away. But God, it would just be on you. And God, I pray that you would continually recall these scriptures to our mind. As our mind begins to wander and doubt. 